Well, it's just uh, under two weeks to go until Election Day in the United States, with the race shaping up to be a very tight one, according to the polls. Both Kamala Harris and Donald Trump have been crisscrossing swing states and beyond to woo undecided voters who will play a crucial role in determining the next U.S. president. Well, to discuss, I'm joined in the studio by our international affairs commentator, Doug Herbert. Good to see you as Hi there, always, Jenny. Doug. So the race is very much neck and neck so far. It's going to boil down to those key groups of undecided voters. The question is, can they still sway them? Uh, well, first of all, you have to define who are these undecided voters, right? Because it has become the most Google term. It is the biggest buzzword of the campaign. They have become the demographic. It is the golden vote, undecided. What they mean is there is literally now a down-in-the-dirt scramble among each campaign for not just swing voters throughout the country, but a sliver of swing voters within each battleground state. Now, these are people who either literally this late in the game have still not made up their minds on who to vote for. You might say, if you follow politics closely in the so how can that be? How do they not know one way or the other who they're voting for? But a lot of people who literally have just woken up to the fact uh, that, oh, there's an election going on. Oh, okay, well, will I vote or not? Which brings you to the other category of undecided, which is uncommitted. It's not just that they're undecided and, well, they'll eventually make up their minds and walk to the polls and vote. There's uncommitted, meaning they don't even know if they're going to vote. Uh, you know, and Donald Trump referred to this when he made a, a, a lewd comment about uh, the wives of women. He was speaking to women at a recent rally, uh, and he was saying, get your cus husbands off the couch and, and get them to vote. There's those low propensity voters, low propensity meaning just that, people who are just either apathetic, don't believe it will make a difference, aren't tuned in, don't see themselves as political, don't really care. Those are also technically also lumped together with the undecided. Polls show, and once again, oh, polls come with a big asterisk that we know the caveats that come with polls, but general surveys have found that anywhere from 2% to 5% of America's electorate at this stage remain undecided, perhaps a little less now than 5%, somewhere probably around 3%. I say that because 25 million Americans have already cast a ballot. If there's perhaps a sign, a troubling sign for Kamala Harris, and I'm not saying it's a make or break thing, but if troubling for her is among those who remain undecided this late in the game, some surveys have suggested that they prioritize uh, issues such as the economy and immigration, which also happen to be the top issues uh, that are driving a lot of Republicans and a lot of voters. Uh, they say it's their priority right now in this election, especially among Trump voters or Republican-leaning voters. So if they say that they are prioritizing economy and immigration, and those people tend to score Donald Trump higher on those two issues relative to Kamala Harris, those are issues which could work against her. But like I said, this is granular. They are literally door to door and almost room to room within the houses themselves trying to get individual members of families to vote. So it goes beyond just the door knocking. Um, it is that granular right now. It is that uncertain. Um, it is that, like I said, a, 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 a scramble in, in the dirt right now for, for every single vote. And the candidates are also sharpening their messages now too, aren't they? I mean, what are your main takeaways from what the U.S. pundits are calling Donald Trump and Kamala Harris's closing arguments? Well, the gloves are off on all sides, right? Um, and if Kamala Harris has been perhaps more restrained in her use of language or wanting to say certain things very explicitly, very publicly, like I said, the gloves are off right now. She has now, um, in response to a question uh, by an interviewer in the past week, is Donald Trump a fascist? She has said, yes, I agree he is. Um, by the dictionary definition of fascism. She has, you know, hammered away at what has been the bottom line message, not only that, which he said in the debate, not only that he isn't a serious man, uh, he's not a serious man, but he would be, the consequences of his election would be extremely dangerous and serious. She's also tried to double down on the message that he is dictatorial, dangerous, that he himself has said he would serve as a dictator from day one, uh, that he is un unfit for office and unstable. Um, and, uh, you know, recently when he was swaying for 39 minutes uh, at, a, at a rally to a playlist of music that, that, that he just started calling out, she basically tweeted afterwards, hope he's okay. Donald Trump, on the other hand, like I said, gloves are off. Gloves are always off with Donald Trump, right? His his brand in politics has been saying, or at least perceived to say, what other politicians thought and other people thought, but wouldn't say publicly because it wasn't politically correct. So his brand, he's built himself on that brand, say it all, whatever's on your mind, because I know what I'm saying, you're thinking. So he's basically called Kamala Harris, I'll bleep myself, a shh candidate, beep, uh, it, literally saying she is a shh 
vice president, uh, saying, you know, calling her a moron, that she is uh, an idiot. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's a no holds barred thing. I'm chuckling only because you could say that Donald Trump has never been restrained in the uh, in the vocabulary he has used to denigrate his opponents. But when it comes right now to this campaign, he really is going for broke. And even when he's not directly addressing her, he was speaking to a rally recently with a lot of young men, the male vote being a big one, uh, basically talking about the uh, the size of the genitalia of a deceased uh, golfer, Arnold Palmer. Uh, and, uh, you know, you'd say, is that really uh, relevant to the campaign? And at the end of the day, this doubling down in messages, Donald Trump perhaps is more appealing to the people who know what they want to hear from him, and he's almost entertaining them in a way. He's giving them what they want and expect of Donald Trump. The message itself matters less than the fact that he's delivering it in the way he's delivering it. So both candidates, though, still doubling down, but uh, Kamala Harris sticking to that original message that he, at the end of the day, Donald Trump would be a danger to democracy. Donald Trump doubling down his message that this is a woman who is serially, signally uh, unfit herself to be president, um, who doesn't have the mental capacity to be president, um, and, and that he alone, he alone would be able to fix a nation, which is not to perhaps be uh, dismissed out of hand because Surveys also suggest that t only 28 percent of Americans uh, see America headed in the right direction. So a president that says, I will fix the nation, that resonates very strongly with a certain part of the uh, electorate that is inclined, susceptible to receive that message. But I return to what I said at the beginning. A large part of Donald Trump's electorate, uh, not just the diehard MAGA voters, but people who lean towards Donald Trump, they are immovable, they are immutable. They will not change their votes, whereas Kamala Harris's vote in some cases is seen as more volatile. Now, we've talked endlessly about the polls and how tight they are, but many U.S. pollsters are actually telling people to Very stop looking at the polls because it's just too close yeah. to call. Very quick. The, la the final New York Times-Siena College poll showed it a dead heat, 48 percent in the popular vote, each one nationwide. Uh, even pollsters, prominent pollsters in the U.S., they will say, don't trust the polls. I'm a pollster. I don't trust the poll anymore. Don't even trust your gut. We don't know too close to call. All right. We'll just have to see on November 5th, won't we? Thank you very much. Our international affairs commentator, Doug Herbert.